Look at the claws on the dinosaurs on your left. The claws were specialized tools for disemboweling large plant-eating dinosaurs. Sort of like a can opener. These small dinosaurs were very fast. My name is Ted Deschler. I'm Ken Tolberg. I'm a curator of paleontology here at the Academy of Natural Sciences. And I'm the artist who created the Deinonychus sculpture that you see on your left. I've always, in my sculptures, worked directly from life. And it's quite a challenge when you are supposed to do an extinct animal. And so in creating this sculpture, the only thing I had available to me was a skeleton. And, you know, you can actually go in and study the bones and you can get sort of a guess at the degree of muscle developments and form a theory, at least, of, of the shapes and um, also the agility of the animal. Sculptor Kent Olberg actually worked with the scientist who had discovered Deinonychus, a Yale professor named Dr. John Ostrom. We had a lot of fun. Ostrom's work demonstrated that these kinds of dinosaurs were closely related to birds. Actually, Ostrom's ideas about these dinosaurs you're looking at were so compelling that they inspired Michael Crichton to write Jurassic Park. I think we came up with a form of Deinonychus that was very believable. You know, I think it's particularly important in paleontology that artists are able to bring life to the dead bones. Paleontologists may study the bones, ponder the lifestyle of the animals, but they're not willing to take that extra step to actually bring that animal to life. In the mid-19th century, a sculptor named Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins and the scientist Joseph Leidy worked together on a dinosaur skeleton that had been discovered just over the river in New Jersey. Take a look at the sculpture on your right. That's Joseph Leidy. Just imagine what it would have been like for him to hold those gigantic bones. Many of them, the vertebrae, were so large that they were used by various people around Haddonfield as doorstops. That's Leonard Warren. He's the author of the biography, Joseph Leidy, The Last Man Who Knew Everything. So Joseph Leidy became, I think, quite excited about these large bones. Once that skeleton was put together, it, it amazed people. You can imagine, for the first time in the world, we were seeing this animal called a dinosaur, the terrible lizard. So our fascination with dinosaurs really does begin with Joseph Leidy. But it wasn't just dinosaurs. People sent him the bones of all kinds of animals they found in North America. Rhinoceros, saber-toothed tigers, camels. And an Ice Age lion. The jaw of that lion is the fossil you see Lydie holding in his left hand. So these two sculptures you're standing in front of really represent the way we first thought about dinosaurs and how we imagine them today. But the thing is with science... It's always evolving. That's sculptor Kent Olberg again. And 100 years from now, people might look at Deinonychus and said, wow, how much more we know today. 